Hello dear brothers and sisters. Thank you so much for returning back to my channel. Thank you so much for being here. I pray that the word of the Lord will bless you this week and that God will encounter you through his word and that this word may penetrate your heart and continue to lead you in his ways. So I'm gonna start with prayer. Heavenly Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we come before you, Lord. We're so grateful, my God, to be here. Thank you for being alive, my God. Thank you for giving us breath in our bodies. Thank you for giving us strength and joy, my God. We just thank you so much for calling us, Father God, according to your name, according to your perfect will. I pray that you will open our hearts, that we will receive and that we will learn what you have intended through this word father god i pray that you would open up the listeners heart and ears and mind father god and that you will fill them with what you want them to learn through this message and we just thank you god for your word in jesus name we pray amen okay so today i'm going to be talking about esther and i just love the story of esther it is so full of God's wisdom, of perseverance, of strength, of boldness, of um, encouragement. So I'm um, going to be, let's see what the Lord says. So the title of this message is called Making Your Mark. And the reason why is because God has put us uh, in a place of influence in a place where our voice is being heard and we are positioned for such a time as this. So I will begin to speak of, um, so the in the story of Esther, we have the queen, Queen Vashti, which was the Bible says that she was, a, you know, beautiful and she was a beautiful woman. And when the king, called her to come forward and then she you know we know the story i am will you know let's see what uh, let's see we're gonna begin with uh, esther chapter 1 verses 16. let's see So he decided that he wanted the, the because he had um, the, um, the husband wanted, he had a celebration. And in his long celebration, he decided that he wanted to bring his wife, Vashti, uh, to come forward so people can see her because she was so beautiful. And the, it says, uh, 111, it says, um, Okay, let's start with 110. It says, On the seventh day, when the heart of the king was merry with the wine, he commanded Mehuman, Bishta, Harmona, Vishwamashta, Akvashka, Setar, and Karkas, even eunuchs, even seven eunuchs who was in the presence of the king, to bring Vashti before the king, wearing her royal crown, in order to show her beauty to the people and the officials, for she was beautiful to behold. But the queen Vashti refused to come at the king's command brought by his eunuchs. Therefore, the king was furious and his anger burned within, within him. So we have the king that has said that to bring the wife forward. And Esther has refused to come forward. So now the king is furious and he is, the Bible says that the anger burned within him. And then after that in, in Esther 1.16, and it says, And Memukan answered before the king and the princess, Queen Vashti has not only wronged the king, but also all the princesses and all the people who were in the providence of King Hazarus. For the queen's behavior will become known to all women so that they will despise their husbands and their eyes when they report. King Ahusus commanded Queen Vashti to be brought in before him but she did not come. This very day, the noble ladies of Persia media will say all the king's officials that they have heard of the behavior of the queen, that there will be excessive contempt and wrath. 
so now they're thinking like what can we do because her behavior is uncalled for and all the husbands like that their wives are going to be disobedient because of this example that that she has refused in front of everybody pretty much like put him to shame embarrass him said i'm not gonna do what you have asked me to do i'm not gonna come forward i'm not gonna put on the gown like you know she said no i'm not so then the king is consulting with the what with the royal people like what can we do and it says in verse 19 if it pleases the king let a royal decree go out from him and let it be recorded in the law of the persians and the medes so that it will not be altered that vashti shall not come no more before the king azurus and let her, the king give her a royal position to another who is better than she. So now because of her, for her because of not following uh, the king for not listening to his, to his request, now um, Queen Vashti has lost her position, and now she's going to be replaced by another, because uh, the Bible says that better than she is. So pretty much somebody who will listen, somebody who will be humbled and somebody who will not be, you know, disobedient, defiant to the king. So then we go and so that was Vashti. So I want us to all to remember Vashti. So what she stands for Vashti, she stands for, you know, prideful. She stands for disobedience. She stands for, you know, not following the king's command. She has her own agenda and she was doing her own party and she was doing her own thing while the king was having his own, you know, his own party. She was having her own party as well. So she had her own agenda and she did not want to be distracted by the king and by what he had to say because she had she was doing her own thing and she didn't care about how he would look because she didn't want to go so then after that the bible says that the that they will and the let the king give her royal position to another who is better than she is so it's saying that somebody that yes she was beautiful but now there's going to come somebody better than her because beauty is good but it's not good enough there's somebody that can be both beautiful inside and beautiful outside so the bible says that now somebody better than vashti is going to come forward to replace her and then after i will i will go move uh to i'm gonna go to esther 2 9. so now we have we have now the king is looking for another one so now a decree goes out that all the virgins from all over are going to be brought to him and that he's going to choose another another woman to replace vashti because of what she has done so vashti is like you know she's she's not in the picture no more because of her disobedience and then after that so it says here that um So we have Mordecai. Mordecai is the uncle of this woman. Her name is Esther. Her name was Hadassah. But and then it, that is Esther. And it says the young woman was lovely and beautiful. It's so crazy that they put lovely before beautiful. So that means that they're looking at the inside and then the the beauty is on the outside lovely so she as a person she was lovely and beautiful so beauty wasn't just the whole thing she had more to to give than just the outer appearance it says lovely and beautiful and then it says um so when this woman comes esther she comes in it says number nine two nine it says now the young woman pleased him and she obtained his favor so he readily gave beauty preparations for her besides her allowance the seven choice maid servants were provided for her king's palace and he moved her and her maid servant to the best place in the house of the woman so here we hear about about Esther she has favor there's all this beautiful woman but she is the one that stands out out of all the women and it says that she found favor 
and the beauty preparations began for her so she already had like the upper hand because the other women were there but her beauty preparations began before all of them so she was already being prepared for the presentation because she was going to be brought before the king so there she finds favor and then now people are helping her in her preparation because god has said these people that will prepare her to help her and um, aid her and what is going to be happening and then we go to 217 so this preparation for her was going to be a 12 month preparation so for 12 months she's going to be with myrrh and for six months she's going to be with perfumes so for 12 months she was being prepared before she can actually come into his presence to meet him and then we go to esther 217 and then it says and then it says and i'm gonna do It says, and Esther obtained favor in the sight of all who saw her. So Esther was taken to the king Hazarus into his royal place in the 10th month, which is the month of Tabith in the seventh year of his reign. The king loved Esther more than all the other women, and she obtained grace and favor in the sight more than all the virgins. So he set her with a royal crown upon her head and made her queen instead of Vashti. So he, here we see favor again. So number one, she has favor with all the people that she comes across with. But when she is presented to the king, after her preparation that she's been going on, it says that she obtained more favor than all the other women, grace and favor, more than all the other virgins. So here we see favor again. So favor just continues to keep on following her everywhere she goes, favor, favor, favor. And then we go to Esther's 5. 5 uh, verses 2 and 3 it says uh, verses 5 2 it says so it was then the king saw the queen Esther standing in the court that she found favor in his sight once again favor and the king held out the the to Esther the golden scepter that was in his hand then Esther went near and touched the scepter and the king said to her, What do you wish, Queen Esther? What is your request? And it shall be given to you up to half of the kingdom. So here we see again favor that Esther is coming before the king. And when the king extends the scepter, he means that he's giving you the right. And if he doesn't extend the scepter, then you will die if the king chooses not to extend it because you came before his presence without being called to come into the his presence so the message of this uh, the whole message of this is that god has called us wherever he has placed us he has placed us in a in a position that we have power he has placed us in a place that we have um um, in our position that we have power and that our words are powerful as well and that sometimes we think that what we have to say is not important that what we have to say doesn't really matter and that our voice should be silenced because that's what the enemy will try to do the enemy will try to silence our voice and to say that it is not important the word that God has put inside of us that we need to speak. So God wants us to know that we are influential wherever we have been placed by God and that our voice matters and that we have power and that we need to use our voice to voice out what God wants us to speak. And have we see here that when God opens favor the favor is just not for yourself i know that sometimes we like to think oh it's for me it's for me it's for me but god shows here that the favor is not for us but that the favor is for god's kingdom to come and he will open the doors also that we see here that the contrast between vashti which was 
arrogant and prideful and here we have esther she's different that's why the bible said that somebody better will come before her because she was different she was not focusing on her outer experience can get her but she was focusing on her people the people she was a jew and her uncle mordecai told her don't say that you're a jew you know just go in and you know withhold that keep it until the correct time so she was it also shows that she was um that shows that she was a humble person and a listener and that she was obedient and when we go to esther 2 15 it says that when um when the woman was to go in with the king the woman was allowed to take one thing with her when she was gonna go be you know that private time with the king you were allowed to take anything you wanted and it right here it just shows her her character and her humbleness it says it says when it had uh it says when who had taken her as uh it says when it came to go into the king she requested nothing but what Haggai, the eunuch the custodian of the woman advised so they said esther what do you want to take when you go into with the king and she says whatever the eunuch which was the the man that were in charge of taking care of her and preparing her she says whatever he says that i should take in with me i will i will take in the king so she was humble in a way that she didn't think oh i know what i need to take but she knew that these men that was their job to prepare the woman and she says and she humbled herself and she said whatever he says the eunuch that i should take in with me then that's what i will take so it shows that her character is a humble character and then we reread esther 2 20 we see here that says now esther had not revealed her family and and her people just as mordecai had had charged her so right there it shows that she was listening to mordecai it said for esther obeyed the command of mordecai when she was brought up by him so even then it says that she even though she's in a place of prominence and she's in a place where she can um she's pretty much she has favor already and here's mordecai outside of the gate telling her what to do and it says that she uh, that that she that she obeyed the command he told her withhold that information and she listened so it shows her that she was teachable and she wasn't arrogant and thinking that she knew everything but she humbled herself to be taught by people she humbled herself to be taught by the eunuch she humbled herself to be taught by by her uncle mordecai and what the lord wants us to learn here is that when the lord opens the doors for favor it's not because we have anything great inside of us but that he alone god almighty has opened that door so when we are in a place where we see the doors being opened and god doing things for us and for us to come to a place that we are in a position of power and to say something that it is not for us to get prideful and for us to think that we have earned it or that we have done anything great but for us to know that the great one has opened that door for us for us to be able to stand up for the kingdom of god and to say what he wants us to say and to be obedient to him and then after we go to uh verse uh chapter 4 verse 10 so then we have you know in all the stories there's always going to be a hater so a hater always trying to come against the plan of god so in this story the hater we have his name is haman haman is um the pretty much the the second hand to the king and he doesn't like mordecai the uncle of esther because mordecai will not bow down and pay homage to him so here we have you know two different people the good and the bad and it's always like that there there's always a person that are trying to do good mordecai and then we have haman that is mad because he will not worship him or bow down to idols and you know how the people get uh, very um, excited when the presence of god is shows up 
So then after that, um, so the guy Mordecai, I, the guy Haman says that I, he wants to do like a decree where um, um, all the all the Jews are are. Are, are, all the Jews are, are, are killed and here we have um, Esther 4.10 then Esther spoke to Hatat and gave him a command for Mordecai and all the king's servants and all the people the king's providence know that any man or woman who goes into the inner court of the house who has not been called he has but one law to all be put to death to the one of the king holds out the golden scepter that he may live so here we have um, Mordecai. Here we have Mordecai um, telling um, a message to one of the the people that is inside with Esther, and Mordecai is explaining to him that this guy Haman wants to get rid of all the Jews um, on the twelfth month of their calendar year of the Jewish. So. So they're giving a word to Esther what what has happened, and then um, and then after Esther um, is speaking to Hatach and Esther is they're talking to each other and explaining like what is going on. But the law is that if the the, the like I said that that if the king doesn't um, show the golden scepter, you can be put to death. So um, the queen Esther had not been called to go into his presence. Um, it says, yeah, I have not been called to go into the king these 30 days. So they told Mordecai Esther's word. And Mordecai told them to answer Esther. You know, this is, and, and I mean, out of everything that I, I'm saying and everything that is going forward in this message, this is the chapter, the this paragraph that I'm going to read. It's the most important paragraph that God wants the word that the God, that the Lord has. It's this, this that Mordecai answers her. Um, and he tells her. And Mordecai told them to answer Esther. Do not think in your heart that you will escape in the king's palace any more than any of the other Jews. So now Mordecai, the, the uncle, is telling message to the messenger to tell Esther. Do not think in your heart, Esther, that you will escape the king's palace any more than all the other Jews. So he's letting her know just because you're inside of there doesn't mean that you're going to be able to escape the what Haman's command is to get rid of all the Jews because she's a Jew. So he's telling her, don't think in your heart. So like, do not be deceived in your heart. Do not think in your heart that you will escape the king's palace any more than all the other Jews. For 14, for if you remain completely silent at this time, relief and deliverance will arise for the Jews from another place. But you and your house will perish. Yet, no, yet who knows whether you have come to the kingdom for such a time as this. Then Esther told them to reply to Mordecai, Go and gather all the Jews who are present in Shushan and fast for me, neither eat nor drink for three days or nights. My maids and I will fast, and so I will go to the king, which is against the law. And if I perish, I perish. So I thought that was so amazing. So right there, Mordecai is telling her, Daughter, if you be, choose to be silent at this time, that it is time for you to stand up and to speak up. Don't think that it's not going to come to you or to your house because you and your house will perish. And he says, and you have been called for such a time as this. And that is the word that the Lord has for this message, that we have been called for such a time as this right now. And God is saying that if you choose to remain quiet and you choose to remain comfortable if you choose to remain not to do what the lord is telling you to do do not think that god will not use another person and deliverance for the jews will not come from another place don't think that god is not going to use anybody because just as we start from the beginning we have two people we have vashti that decided to disobey the king and then you got to think about this think about the king is god jesus she chose to to disobey and then we have Queen Esther, who was better than her, and God used Esther to replace her. So this, and then when we read Esther, it says, do not think 
that relief and deliverance will not arise for the Jews. So God is going to use somebody regardless if you choose to be used or not. But don't think that you will escape. That's what the Lord is saying in this word, that this is not the time for you to be quiet. This is not the time for you to sit down. This is not the time for you to let the time pass by. But God is saying that this is a time for you to arise in what God has called you to do. Whatever your gifts are, there is for now to use them. Whatever God is telling you to speak out or to voice, it is for such a time as this that God has called us. And our job is not to be quiet and our job is not to be silent and our job is not to be timid but to be bold like esther because she was bold because he tells her yet you do not know if you were called for such a time as this and we know that we are called for such a time as this no matter all the craziness that's going around the world we are here we were called for such a time as this and then esther tells them okay i am gonna fast me and my maids and have all the jews fast for three days and for three nights and i will go to the king and if i perish i perish so right there she's not only choosing to stand up for her and her family but she's choosing to stand up for all the jews if she decides to be quiet then all the jews were gonna get die including her herself but in that time she chooses to be bold and say i will not be quiet if i perish i perish but we know that God of favor is favor, favor, favor. And God is not going to tell you to speak if he's not going to back you up, you know? So God is so amazing because Esther becomes, Esther becomes, um, Esther becomes such a representative of what God means to us. And then we know here that that when the enemy comes the enemy will have to to pay the price for coming um against us and everything that the enemy will want to plot and plan for us it will backfire because haman wanted for mordecai to be killed but in the end he and his family were the ones that ended up being murdered for coming against Esther who found favor in her husband's heart and Esther becomes a, a to us she becomes a Christ like type of person because she becomes a savior and a deliverer to her people and when we ourselves stand up we become we partake in that Christ like attitude where we stand up and we become deliverers for us and for our families and for the other people that will come be um, after us as a generation and then when we and uh, i'm going to close out with this um esther 929 it says here in esther 929 then queen esther the daughter of abigail with mordecai the jew who wrote full authority to confirm the second letter about purim and mordecai sent out a letter to all the jews to the 127 provinces of the king of Asaros, which is her husband, with words of peace and, and truth to confirm these days of Purim at their appointed time, as Mordecai the Jew and the Queen Esther had prescribed for them, as they had decreed for themselves and their descendants concerning the matter of their fasting and lamenting. So the decree of Esther confirmed these matters of Purim and it was written in the book. So because of this, now they it becomes a holiday and a celebration to the jews the, the purim and it's um the celebration of their deliverance of the jews so and it says right here that it says concerning the mat um it says um let me see It says, as Mordecai and the Jew, the Queen Esther had prescribed for them, as they had decreed for themselves and their descendants concerning the matter of their fasting and lamenting. So during that time when they didn't know what was happening, they were fasting and they were lamenting. But then it became a celebration because they were delivered. And it's a day memorable forever and ever. So even though if um, Esther is not here anymore, we celebrate her voice. We celebrate that she was a woman of 
valiant. She was a woman that knew that fasting had power. She was a woman that submitted herself under the God Almighty. And when we as women submit ourselves under the guide of our, our mighty, and he has told us to speak something to deliver the people, this is a big weight. God doesn't put us in positions we're, we're like hey favor and favor and favor of opening 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 and god destroying the opposition for us to be put in a place that we are supposed to be bold and be valiant like god almighty and it is not for us to use it for our own benefit for us to get money for us to be um you know thinking that we're all that in a bag of chips but god is saying use your voice my daughter for the kingdom of god it's just much more than us. It's just not about us. It's about the people. It's about our children, children. It's about the generation. It's not about us. It's about God and it's about his kingdom. And we're here for his kingdom. And I'm so happy that the Lord gave this word because he lets us know that he's on our side and that he does not want us to be silenced in this season, but to be bold and to stand up for righteousness, for the kingdom of God. So I just want to close out with prayer and I just want to thank God for his word. Heavenly Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we come before you, Lord. We thank you, God Almighty, that your word is powerful and sharper than a double-edged sword piercing through the bone and marrow and as a discerner of the hearts, my God. I just thank you, my God, that your word is powerful, Father God. I come before you, Father God. And I ask for forgiveness, my God. And I ask for forgiveness on behalf of my brothers and my sisters, my God. If we have not taken your word, if we have taken your word lightly, if you have placed us in a place of in a position where we have not obeyed you, Father God, I pray that you would wipe our clean, uh, wipe it new, Father God. I pray that you would give us a boldness, Father God. I thank you, God, that you would give us your words that would be uh, like a mighty father god lion by father god that we would not be timid that we will not be scared that we will not be afraid that we will be a mighty men or, and woman father god valiant father god that we will not be afraid like david father god not scared of the goliaths because we know that the enemy will try to put goliaths all over the split the place to timid us and silence our voice father god but i thank you god that you are taking care of them father god for you said father god that the battle is not ours but the battle is yours father god so we thank you, my God, for the voices. I thank you for all the Esthers that you have called for such a time as this, Father God. I pray, Father God, that your anointed would fall upon them, Father God, and that your Holy Spirit will empower us to do what you have called us to do, my God. I pray that you would also use the men to stand up, my God, and to do what is right in their house, that they will not be pushed down by their wives, Father God, but that they will do what the Lord has asked them to do, my God. I thank you, Father God, for calling us to such a time as this, Father God. 2022, my God, will be a year of transformation, my God. We will see great victories, Father God, in our lives, Father God, if we listen to you, my God. I pray that you would open the clear, open the way, Father God, for us to get to that place, Father God, where we're able, Father God, to use our voice, Father God, to deliver the people, my God. I thank you for touching our lips, Father God. For, I remember a story in the Bible, Father God, that he said, if you were to touch my lips, Father God, and you, I'm a man, Father God, with unclean lips. But he said, here I am, Lord, use me. And you came and you touched him and you cleaned his lips, Father God. May you clean our lips, my God, and may you touch us, Mother God. Father God, and that may we do only what you have called us to do, where we not be timid, Father God, or pushed around, my God, but we will be bold. I thank you that we will soar, Father God, like eagle's wings, Father God, that you would give us strength. When we feel tired, my God, I pray that we will encourage ourselves in the Lord. I thank you, my God, for everything you're doing, my God. I thank you, Father God, that even though it looks like everything like nothing is happening father god i know that you're a god that doesn't sleep when we're tired you're working you're working everything out for your children and those who are called according to your perfect plan father god we rest knowing that you know what we need my god i thank you my god and i surrender everything at your feet my jesus 
And I thank you, Father God, when we surrender everything, Father God, you will do mighty, mighty works and exploits in our life, my God, because of our humbled heart before you. I thank you, my God, for transforming us to be like you, my God, from to go to to go from glory to glory. We thank you for this week, my God. I pray that you would nourish our our spiritual man, Father God. I thank you, my God, for making the crooked path straight. As we trust you, my God, and we go not in our own strength, Father God, but we go in your strength. May you fill us up with grace and mercy, protect our house, cover us with the blood of Jesus, Father God. We thank you, God. We submit ourselves before you. We love you. We worship you, Father God. There is no other God. You are the only God, my God. We thank you for this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Bye. I love you guys. See you next week.